Hello and welcome to this video about writing the method in your section 1 ISA. This question is worth 9 out of the 20 marks available. So the mark scheme for this is what we call a hierarchical marking scheme. Um, there are five points on the ISA, which I'll come to in the next question. And when you look at the mark scheme, um, you know, do does the answer hit every single one of those points? Does it hit a few of those points or does it only hit a couple of those points? And once you've decided which box a student's answer fits in, you have to decide is it a low, middle or top answer. So the disadvantage for this for you as a student is that even if you write me a beautiful A-level, absolutely fantastic, amazing answer, but you forget to tell me what your control variables are, you're limiting yourself to this box here and there's really not a lot I can do about it because you've missed off the tiny thing, one sentence, maybe two sentences, the maximum amount of marks I can give you. And we're probably looking at five marks because I can't give you a high answer because you've missed something out. Um, when we're looking at whether you get a, a low, middle or a high answer, we also take into account your um, quality of written communication, your spelling, punctuation and grammar. So always check that to make sure whichever box you fall into, you can fall at the top of that box. Students of mine will know that I expect everybody to be falling into this box and I get very annoyed if I don't get eight or nine marks out of people for this question. So this is a summary of what the long question will ask you. Um, this has been the same in every single ISA that I've seen. This is publicly available, this um, question, but I've just summarised it here. So they're going to ask you about the equipment. They're going to ask you how you use the equipment. They're going to ask you what measurements you take, how you're going to make sure it's a fair test and a risk assessment. There are these five bullet points and when you're writing your answer, I want you to physically tick off each bullet point as you are going through, as you've done them, so that at the end of the exam, you can be very, very clear that you have completed every single task. So the equipment list. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is a list of all the equipment you are going to use and list everything. If you're going to use a timer, list that. If you're going to use string, list that. If you're going to use a glass rod, do not leave anything out. List every single bit of equipment you can think of. And if you want to, if you really want to make sure you get the top marks, just describe briefly, very, very briefly, what you are going to use um what you're going to use each piece of equipment for. So you could use a ruler or a tape measure to measure the radius. I really do not want you to spend a lot of time writing this. I want short, sharp, snappy answers. Now, how you use the equipment. I've seen this question confuse a lot of people because they think it is, I will use the tape measure to measure the distance of the radius or I will use the measuring cylinder to measure out the acid. That's not it at all. This is asking you for your method. And I want short, sharp bullet points. I will do this in step one, this in step two, this in step three. And to make sure you get the marks, I always like a diagram which shows you the setup of the equipment. Now, measurements and fair test, I put these together on one slide because they are really, really short. Measurements are just asking you if you can identify the dependent variable. Dependent variable. So you want to make it clear to the examiner, to the person marking your work, that you have answered this point and you know what it is. I will measure blah. This is my dependent variable. Something like that, something along those lines. How you make it a fair test. Um, I get loads of students saying, I'll make it a fair test by repeating it three times. 
this isn't what the examiner is looking for. Here they are looking for your control variables. So what things are you keeping it the same? So you could say something like, to make it a fair test, I will keep blah, blah, and blah the same. These are my control variables. You need to make it really clear to the examiner that you can identify the independent, the dependent, and the control variables. So if you want to go that extra step right at the bottom, my independent variable is, my dependent variable is, my control variable is. If you're confused about the difference between independent, dependent and control variables, I've also made a video on this for you. You have to remember that this question, you also get marked on your spelling, your punctuation and grammar, or your quality of written communication if you're more familiar with it that way. So you have to make sure you have your full stops in, your capital letters in, and your spelling has to be perfect, especially of equipment. Um, I just want to point out to you that a Bunsen burner is with a capital B because it is the name of the person, person Bunsen, whoever Bunsen was a very long time ago. For the spelling of your equipment, don't forget you can write your equipment on your candidate research notes so that you make sure you can get everything spelled. So these are the five points you need to cover in your um, long nine mark question in section one. Your equipment, how you will use equipment, the measurements, the fair task and your risk assessment. Equipment, I just want a list. How you use equipment is your method. Measurements, that's your dependent variable. Fair test, that's your control variable. And risk assessment, I've made a whole separate video on that but don't forget to include it.